Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Hello, hail, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good anything, good any time of day to you. Welcome back to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. It's good to see everybody back here today on this fine Thursday day, morning, afternoon, evening, again, wherever you are. Thank you for coming back and checking out what we got to ramble on about this week. As always, if you want to support this podcast, please check the link tree link that is annotated in the show notes and description of this video. There's a lot of links. There's the Amazon wish list. There's the Patreon page. There are all the socials. There's the merchandise store through Spring. There's everything. Uh, just go for a little perusing. Go meander about uh, in the Linktree site and see what suits you there in ways that you can support this podcast, this channel, what we do here. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, today's guest is um, somebody who has come to find out been watching this podcast for several years now um so that's really cool to know that you know we've retained some interest um for more than just a little while so um and we also featured uh this guest's question or topic of discussion on a previous episode this is uh this this person's request or, or topic is the reason why we talked about loki again so recently here on the channel and on the podcast so morgan is going to be coming on here today to talk about her work through uh, a business that she's, I guess we call it business, you know, project business. Um, but a Druid's Luck is is Morgan's uh, brand, and uh, they're going to be launching an Etsy store here soon. There's going to be all kinds of information for you to follow Morgan on her socials and um, anything that's available at the time of this podcast being aired is going to be linked down in the description and show notes of this podcast as well. So do be sure to check that out, follow along, su uh, support Morgan and, and what she does. But um, really fun episode today. This uh, this topic is one I think that we can all relate to. You know, this is a topic that we can all find some some impact with. Uh, talking about burnout dealing with burnout, not getting burnt out, or are we? <laughs> are we going to talk about not being burnt out? Or are we just going to, you know, embrace the fact that burnout does happen, guys? Ladies and gentlemen, it does happen. You know, this isn't a thing that, um, I don't think this is really a thing that we can ultimately avoid. I mean, even, even in the things that we're most passionate about, sometimes we just get tired and we don't want to do it. Um, so we're going to talk about it. We're going to ramble on about it today, um, amongst other things, I'm sure, as the nature of the podcast goes. It's a rambling, and it's random at times. But uh, there is some method to the madness. I know uh, Morgan has been dwelling on this topic for a while now, since we set this up, you know, probably about a month or so ago. So um, there's definitely uh, plenty of time for, for her and I to kind of think about the plat, you know, the, the 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 layout, not the platform, but the layout. Um, but again, it's a random rambling, so we just kind of have a loose. It's kind of like that old thing in the Pirates of the Cab Caribbean where uh, um, Barbosa and and Jack Sparrow are talking about the code, the pirates' code. You know, more like guidelines, really. <laughs> uh, this is more like a guideline. You know, these are some topics that we want to talk about: being burnt out. Um, dealing with burnout, um, but there's other stuff that you're going to be uh, exposed to here, um, not in a bad way. So please stick around for the whole episode. There's a lot of cool things that are going to be going on today, and definitely make sure that you're following uh, Morgan on all her socials for supporting what she does with the Druid's Luck, and stay tuned for more information to come on that as the Etsy store is launched. Um, another thing, just bear in mind as we get some of the housekeeping stuff out of the way, there is an event coming up here in just a week or two, actually, um, not this coming 4th of July weekend, but the one, uh, you know, after that, 
this uh the 8th on uh yeah 8th of july it's going to be a day of fun with clearly the folk a tribe that i am uh, uh tied to in, in a way uh so my tribe clearly the folk is going to be having a, a day of fun at the Fate Sanders Recreational Area in Smyrna, Tennessee. Details for that are linked in the description and show notes of this podcast as well. Um, but we're going to be there all day. So we got some canopies that we're going to be setting up by the by the lake. Um, it is the summertime and it is Tennessee. So we're hoping for a great day of, of being able to be out and, and enjoy the water. So please, if you're in the area and you want to come out and meet us and just have a day of fun, it's potluck style. You know, we got some uh, charcoal grills that are going to be accessible for us and and so bring a dish bring a side bring a snack bring your swim trunks bring your swimsuits you know just come on out and hang out with a bunch of heathens in the middle tennessee area so now that we got that out the way again all that information is down in the description or in the show notes of this podcast do be sure to check it out without further ado let's welcome in morgan from a druid's luck here on the random heathen ramblings podcast all right, folks. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, we have a guest today who actually comes by a way of some of her own uh, unique esoteric kind of dealings. This is Morgan, and uh, she has a Etsy shop. She is uh, a tarot reader, an oracle reader. She has uh, she she has this brand or name called A Druid's Luck. So, uh, welcome to the show, Morgan. Thanks for Hi, tuning in. It's really good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. You actually came uh to me in an email and you had also you've been following the the podcast a bit on on the, the so socials you know you tune yeah. into the tune Probably into the like uh, two or three years it's been a while so okay wow well thank you for the support it's yeah. greatly appreciated you know and you were one of the uh, folks who commented on a post that we put out like a month or two ago asking what people uh you know what we should what should we talk about on the podcast what should we ramble on about and you came in clutch with the idea to talk about Loki. Right. And uh, and and so now here we are talking about some of the things that you do. So I mentioned earlier on that you do tarot and Oracle and right. Drew, it's like is your brand. So why don't you kind of elaborate on that for the people watching and listening so they cool. know what we're talking about? So my mission with tarot, um, I do live to just serve the people through the cards. I mean, whatever you're going through, uh the cards really can help hone your intuition about any situation or yourself, people you're dealing with, uh, big life themes. I, the cards are just, I live by the cards. Um, I do have a Catholic background. I was raised Catholic, but uh, mm. during the pandemic, like a lot of us, right? A lot of us pagans. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of people that come from a monotheistic or, or Christian background. Catholic, I have a good friend who, who, was you know born and raised i guess you know in the catholic church so mm -hmm. that's quite a jump <laughs> it is yeah to, um, to paganism yeah uh i even went to like a really catholic college and everything but after i came home i was just like you know this isn't really working anymore like so so um, catholic school huh and, yeah but my, yeah. my parents they, they went to they went to catholic school but it was um it was back in like the probably like the I guess the 70s early uh -huh. 70s so things were probably a little bit different back then than they are now and they didn't go to like college with it it was a right like high school I think and they always talked about how mean the nuns were um, were, the, were they mean in, in like at the university level or at the so college the, level the nuns were pretty um cloistered actually we didn't really talk to them a lot a lot of them had like taken vows of silence too so they didn't really like talk to anybody oh even better <laughs> yeah um the monks i mean the monks themselves because like we even had monks who would teach our classes and stuff uh but like i mean they were pretty nice for the most part um that's good there is like that pressure though you know like oh mm. so so and so it doesn't go to sunday mass like <laughs> mm. they hold that over your head they do yeah so I was just thinking about that a lot when I came home and I was like, do I really want to be a part of that? I don't know. Like, yeah, there's still a lot of really cool things about the Catholic religion that I like. Uh, a lot of the saints and angels, I think are really cool, mm. but, um, for the most part, it's just wasn't working. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's where a lot of us reach, you know, we, 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 I think, uh, at different points in people's lives, we've, 
you know, especially, I don't know, maybe just, maybe it's just my observation, but do you see like nowadays where, where more and more people are kind of awakening to the fact that they can think for themselves and find things for themselves rather than just absolutely. following the tradition of their parents or grandparents absolutely. and just staying with that? You see, you see that too? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, like when you're, when you're so far into it with the Catholic religion, it's just like, well, we follow this one person living in this tiny city who it's supposed to be the holiest place in the world. I mean, I don't know. And then as a Druid, it's just like, you can go outside and like, this is the holiest place in the world is all around me. Like, yeah. So, so you are a, uh, you, you would classify yourself or identify as, as a, as a solitary Druid Correct. practitioner, yeah. right? Druidic. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the Celtic and, uh, yes. Yeah. Type, type themes of a paganism. Right. And I was thinking about this before we recorded. Um, the funny thing is I work with a lot of Norse gods and I do like the Celtic gods a lot, but I don't know. It was weird. Like I, uh, probably two or three years ago when I was starting out, um, I was just basic neo-pagan mm -hmm. and I was exploring like Loki and different, uh, just all of the different gods and gods. But earlier this year, I was like, okay, Loki, this isn't really working. Kind of shifted over to like Odin, Freya. Um, yeah. I work with Bast a lot, the Egyptian cat god. Um, and cool. yeah, like the fairies and stuff too. I mean, that's more Celtic. So, mm. so you have a bit of a mixed pantheon. Mixed bag, yeah. Yeah, mixed bag, yeah. So uh, that's interesting. I, you know, from my my angle you know I, I i lean pretty heavily into the the norse or germanic mm -hmm. side of things and um but i know a lot of people who have you know have had a place either in the past or, or currently have a place uh, similarly right a, a bit of a mixed bag um in their in their individual cultic practices you know the things that they do themselves individually solitarily mm -hmm. um but uh i've never i've never explored that i always felt like if i'm gonna if i'm gonna invite one group of of friends over that kind of align with certain ideas i might not want to invite other friends over that things could clash just kind of a personal thing so yeah. it's interesting to see like what what has been your um experience with the blending of pantheons or the mixing of those types of uh you know, you know energies think, what's it been like it's funny it's like i think that almost comes from just the catholic background oh you you're trying to buy a house pray to the thing of like finance you uh, are trying to study like pray to Thomas Aquinas or you've lost something like St. Anthony of Padua um, and all these saints they come from different countries different cultures um, honestly that's probably where I get it from <laughs> so, okay old habits die hard I guess yeah well that's interesting because you know um, a lot of people who I've noticed that come from like a Christian background uh, feel the need to uh, like abandon and leave everything that they ever were taught behind. Mm -hmm. And there is place for that. I feel like there's a lot of like worldview stuff that it, you know, it shifts and it changes when mm -hmm. you go into a, a, a polytheistic sort of practice, you know, your worldviews over time change. Yeah. Um, but some of like the religiosity of it, I, I see kind of carry over across cultures and across religions, you know, like there's, right. I, I used to, I used to say, and I actually still do that. Like Catholics are, are the, the pagans in denial you know they have the they saints are, they have the, this, they have all like these we ritual have statues and everything like they are just in like denial I mean, yeah mass is so ritualistic i've, I've attended body and blood like that's very you know pagan almost yeah. so, the symbology the yes. you know all of I it totally agree so it's interesting to hear someone else who grew up with that or followed that and even you know attended a, a school of higher learning that its theme was you know that was that's what it was right. built around right. uh, incorporate some of those elements into their current practices so mm -hmm. um you do tarot you, you you know you read tarot you read oracle what is what is a druid's luck about yeah what uh, is all that about? the tarot yeah which um with the tarot i just look to work with the client um where i have different like spreads and everything but um more into the other side of a druid's luck. Uh, the Etsy shop is opening with the spell wish boxes where, I mean, you just put items that are precious to you in it or things like 
you know, it could be a rock or a deck of cards, maybe a piece of paper with like a special intention on it. Um, and then you would put it on your altar or wherever you want. And yeah, like just manifest your goals, your dreams. Um, Great. Yeah. So you're, so, you're going to be launching your Etsy shop under the name of Druid's Luck. Correct. Soon, right? Yeah. Yep. Great. And there's going to be links in the show notes and description. So everybody listening and watching, if, if what Morgan's talking about sounds of interest to you, or you maybe find yourself along that similar type path or, or want to mm -hmm. maybe incorporate things, definitely be sure to check out those, the links that are going to be, uh, you know, in the show notes and description. So, yeah. And they are made to order. So definitely like reach out to me. I can talk to you about the materials I work with and yeah. Love it. So that's great. Mm -hmm. It's all very fascinating. And, um, we're actually here today because one of uh, the people who follows my podcast and I've kind of interacted with a bit online um, asked a question recently. And, you know, we are going to be talking today a bit about burnout. Yes. And this is not something that I think any of us are foreign to. We've all no. felt that. We've all felt yeah. that, you know, feeling of a, I just don't care. I just don't want to yeah. do this anymore. Right. I'm burnt out. Right. Yeah. And before we, really get into talking about that from our different perspectives or our different angles you had planned something uh for this this episode with with your tarot cards didn't yes you? yes okay um so today i thought we could do a five card um based off of the five different elements spread and it's going to be a collective reading uh okay. just asking the question what does our do ourselves, you and me, Jesse, and the audience need to know about going into this weekend, the kind of energy that okay. we should be aware of. So, so before you start, I could, uh, if I could just ask one thing is after the show, or maybe after the reading, since it's not going to be live on camera for folks to see anyone that wants to see it, would you mind maybe grabbing a, is it okay to ask, grab a snapshot, a picture of yeah. the spread when you do it, yeah. send it to me and I'll lay it over. Sure. The screen um, so that those that are watching can see it because this is a video podcast as well yes. as audio so those that see, i thought i can... would have like a tripod by the time we recorded but unfortunately it did not arrive in time it's all good it says it's how we do things here we, we, yeah. we shoot from the hip and and make it work yeah. so we'll do it <laughs> for sure okay so we're working today with the um steampunk tarot which is by barbara moore uh the first element that we'll do is for air so that would be guidance just coming from your mind your thoughts um, air is a lot about communication. So what would we need to know about communication going into this weekend? Do that one with earth. I mean, that really relates a lot to your material realm, like your money, your finance, your career. Hmm. And then water is going to be your emotions and your intuition. So emotionally, what would you need to know going into this weekend? Fire, what, uh, what are your passions? What are you, um, wanting and lastly is uh spirit so this card is going to be representative of your true self or the divine mm. and flip them over wow okay wow <laughs> seriously okay See, I can't say, see. So, I can't. I, I so can't sorry. see anything either. So, like the people that end up listening uh, to this, they're like, "What do you mean? Wow!" Wait, wait, I you don't like either. No, I don't know either, guys. Yeah, like, it's gonna be interesting be to see to this. See yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'm saying wow because the first three cards that we pulled are Arcana cards. Um, the first one that we have is the Hanged Man, and I'm just gonna take my guide here. So he is number 12. Usually it represents being uncomfortable, but like can also be representative of like surrendering to an experience or situation. Uh, and this so is the air, right? This the, is the air yeah. uh, okay. element. Yeah. So this is probably, um, probably somebody who needs to listen to themselves more is like what I would say. Uh, okay. Yeah. Like probably. 
And remember, guys, this is what's going into this coming weekend. So as we hear about what, you know, right, we're doing being this pulled, on Monday. So yeah, we're, like, do, we're, okay. we're recording this on Monday. You guys are listening to this on a Thursday. So gearing That's why up I'm thinking through the so week hard about this right now. Stuff, I'm like, yeah. hmm. it's going to have probably different perspectives for for like us doing this right now, getting this this content out to you. To, from the time of us doing this to the time you I hear feel like it I'm gonna listen to this on Thursday and be like oh that makes sense now but mm. <laughs> so willing uh surrender to an experience or situation so I think that's um probably somebody needs to be willing to communicate more uh whether it's with people they work with or uh their personal life their family um, arcana are really representative of like major themes in your life. So that could be like a life lesson for someone. Okay. Mm, and then okay. temperance, that's number 14. Uh, I was going to say, Jesse, before we started the show that I'll send you images of these, uh, cards That'd be great. Too, of the artwork. Yeah. yeah so we can like the artwork them. and then, um, yeah, the final spread, because I can put these up on the screen and people that watch can see what you can see, right? So yeah, right. that'd be great. With, Very organic, um, folks. This is, the, this is the first time we've ever done anything like this the on, on the I've podcast. So, too, so you guys are my guinea fun. pigs for this one, too. Very cool. Um, all right. So with the Earth Element card, we have Temperance. That's another major theme in your life. Um relating a lot to right thing, right time, right place. So um, maybe it could relate to somebody being in the right place at work in their career and their finances. Uh, temperance is a lot about like give and take too and like balance. Right, yeah, not giving too much, not taking too much, that, that kind of, that balance, yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and earth, and that's the, from, that's on the earth card or the earth uh material Material, yeah yeah. is there anything Uh, is there anything to do with like grounding on that actually it's funny that you mentioned that she's uh it's this angel she's standing barefoot with her toe like touching some water Mm -hmm. so okay that's really crazy yeah critical detail right there yeah, yeah like uh cards just do like details like that okay um but she's holding um two spheres and it looks like there is water being balanced in between them um so i guess somebody needs to know that about their job or their money or their possessions to keep things balanced um to make it a goal in their life uh all right and then our third element water so that's emotions and intuition Okay, the tower came up and the tower is, people usually freak out when they see the tower, but um, it's not really a negative card unless you want it to be. I think that like probably a lot of us are, there's always something going on, right? In your life, like it never ends really. We all have problems. (laughs) Uh, But what the tower teaches us is that even though this building is falling down, I mean, you have to look and see what can be salvaged from the wreckage. So I'd say like for this person, what can you salvage from a situation that maybe emotionally isn't going well? Uh, Maybe you got a valuable experience uh, or like, I don't know. Uh, I really like the tower a lot actually, because if if you think about it too, like a building falls down, it can be rebuilt stronger. Um, yeah, I almost see it as like a, uh, and this one was the water, like the water mm-hmm. element, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I, you know, and I'm, a, I'm very animistic in my views of the world as of late anyway. And so I always see the entropic side of nature and how decay and, and, and whatnot leads to new life you know so things that are falling down and things that are falling apart may not they may have just run their course you know what i mean and it's time to lay those things to bed and 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 Mm -hmm. look to like you said salvage things from the wreckage and build off from there right like um it doesn't always mean 
that something is going wrong in your life. It just means like, yeah, you, you got to let go and move on and rebuild. Yeah. Uh, That's tough. That can be tough is, for a lot of us. Yeah. I mean, it's a big, the, uh, you guys will be able to see the image. It's a big building built on a tree. Um, it's hard. A lot of people worked on that. Like a oh, lot yeah. of energy went into building that. So it's hard to let go of things that you feel like you've put all your effort into, you know, yeah. and that's like, no man, but I did so much. And why, right. you know, you almost, yeah. You like, you want to hold on to that forever and it doesn't always work that way. No. Yeah. Um, our fourth element, uh, fire. So your desires and passions, the King of swords, um, speaking to somebody who, I mean, he is a noble. He's the highest of the court cards. Uh, and with swords being about truth, about communication, um, in the image, he's reading a book. So again, going back to what do you stand for? Um, what's important to you? What do you value? Uh, what else can I see here? Um, there's a sword behind him. There's a boat. So, uh, so water again is, is part of the, uh, the, the, this, uh, fire element in a way that's interesting. If, if yeah, a boat is there, boats are used for traveling like on water. Story, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm trying to see what you're seeing from the description of it. So uh -huh. when I think boats, you know, I'm thinking that the, the, yeah. the, the carrier across water and water it's leads definitely to things suggestive of travel. Like there's a globe <laughs> behind him too, on the floor. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, he's like in a library. It looks like a personal library and there's like a really nice sword behind him. Um, hmm. So that's probably somebody who wants to travel a lot. Uh, somebody who likes to study other cultures. Uh, okay. Interesting. I mean, when I say collective, we're probably reading for the both of us in a way too. It's just like, it's interesting right. with collective readings because like, I don't, um, I have like rules with them. I won't do them on TikTok because I've seen people do that. And it's just very, it's kind of gross. Like people mm. are like, yes, no, you know, and they don't explain why. Uh, so, yeah, um, but I feel the same way about runic divination too. Right. Um, so not uh, to interrupt you, but no, you're good. Like when you see that, it's just not genuine it's just people trying to make a buck exactly charlatans I man like i don't work that way uh yeah. if if i give you an answer i want to be able to go into it and um sort of flesh out the details here so uh that would be the fire element um going into spirit your truest self and the divine which is the nine of wands. Uh, nines are a lot about um, attainment mm -hmm. and wands are a lot about uh, going back to like passion and the, because the element for the suit of wands is fire. So it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. The spread really just tied itself together. Um, but it shows a person, she's looking through a telescope or kaleidoscope, whatever. Huh. Uh, well, it's interesting because the spirit card has a representation of nine, which for those who follow like the northern traditions, like myself and whatnot, nine is a sacred number. The nine realms, is right? It? Yeah, because yeah, you got the nine realms, and right. and, and so it, it gets that nine and multiples of nine. Uh, Very cool. You know the three norns. You know what I'm saying? So there's a there's yeah. a lot of uh, there's there's some sacred connections to, to that number in itself and you said it's the nine of ones which is uh i don't do tarot i've not really studied them so much on it weirdly enough i was given a, a a tarot deck um with a bunch of like norse and 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 whatnot imagery on it okay, and i've had cool. those cards read for me and they were a gift from my wife and i've had friends of mine read those mm -hmm. tarots for me but uh yeah so there's like you know images of the gods and then there's runes and Ugh. other things and so yeah they're they're, they're pretty neat but that sounds that's a, right up my alley yeah yeah interesting interesting spread um I so uh i can just like reference my guide really quick here though please um, yeah because like uh i'm really good at like the arcana meanings but um like the pips are really hard because they make up half of the deck 
So, um, I mean, you want to read as intuitively as possible. You want to see mm -hmm. like what the card is kind of telling you. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I like it. Preparing for the next challenge. Uh, so someone who's been through a lot of different things and hmm the pips too they're representative of situations so um that's unique yeah that's everybody's yeah. got their own situation you know but uh whoever this is for it's kind of saying that like this is the last stand like this is it a decision has to be made mm. um maybe no. it's someone who is deciding their spiritual path i don't know like am i doing this for real or yeah yeah so is this is it what you're doing now is this kind of like the the read of the spread the, the summary of everything kind of yeah um put into which a... is uh, what we can do really quick with the oracle card um sort of summarize everything we had uh the okay, so... man temperance the tower king of swords nine of wands um that's i mean it's pretty intense with like the three major arcana themes in there like that's a lot of uh life learning so it ain't gonna get easy is what we're saying here, right it right? never does this, yeah. this is, is the buckle up um right so <laughs> you you have to be willing to be uncomfortable you have to be willing to balance things um and you definitely have to be willing to let go of what's not working anymore so um and, and then obviously just standing up for what you believe in uh what you're passionate about and mm -hmm. um then yeah making a call spiritually like if something's not working out or i like uh, that yeah because you know like i said before um some of the struggles that i see people facing with their spirituality and and, and whatnot is 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 you know finding their own truth mm -hmm. and especially in and i don't know if you see, have experienced this through your like druidic practices or studies and mm -hmm. being being solitary uh you may have avoided some of what i'm about to say but at least in like the heathen circles and communities you know it's very community based tribal based you know what i mean like a lot of people see that where heathenry thrives and shines the best is with community with tribe with others of like minds and uh, when you get so many like minds together, you know you're bound to cross uh, cross swords a bit. You know you're gonna oh, sure. you're gonna you're gonna have debate. You're oh, gonna yeah. have disagreements, and some of those disagreements get get so heated and so heavy that, like, especially on like the historical side of things, some people will become vehemently, you know, if it's not historical, then it's wrong. And then you get people that are like, well, guess I'm doing it wrong then, and they and they 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 they, they neglect to follow what they know to be true because it works for them mm -hmm. and they abandon that because somebody guilted them into thinking it was wrong like who the hell are you to tell somebody I know. that what like, they're doing is wrong that's, that's their experience of, yeah you know? their experiences are valid right and uh i i i i love the history side of things i, mm -hmm. I love learning about the way uh the culture was you know in the pre-christian times and and how the people from what we can learn through archaeological finds and other things learn how the people probably lived and and experienced the divine in their ways but i also feel like it needs to have its place right like that's how yeah. it was done back then it was done back then for a specific reason because that was the way the world was at the time you know we don't we don't sacrifice horses nowadays because that's just not a thing that's that we do upon. <laughs> yeah you know what i mean it's illegal in a lot of places and we certainly mm -hmm. don't have you know nine-year sacrifices of 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 humans like they did at at one point in time in mm -hmm. old Uppsala, you know Uppsala, sweden and uh clearly that's not a thing anymore so right <laughs> part of the history is like yeah let's let's stay relevant and let's glean from it but don't don't discredit someone's experience from, yeah, from being any less valid cool. so that's i like definitely not cool I like that the the cards that you've you know read and spread have 
this uh, this underlying theme, maybe an overarching theme of don't don't be afraid to dig through the rubble of of, of things. Don't be afraid to go down that path. Don't don't mm-hmm. don't be afraid to learn. Don't be afraid to you know be ready to have your sword drawn. Right. Have that. Have that I, protection you know, there. It's, you know. It's but a don't king. be afraid to it's go a there. King, so it was a king. So, I mean, what he says is authoritative, like it's not like a page or a knight. It's definitely like you are right. Right. It's like you are in control. So, um, it's good. Yeah. Like, uh, I actually have one more quick reference for that court card. Just look. Um, they get a little more specific. I'm actually in the middle of a master class for that one right now, but um, this this person though is definitely rational. I mean, definitely. So um, I'm hearing everything you're saying, and I'm like applying it to myself. And maybe the listeners, once they get to this point, are going to be doing the <laughs> it, same because it like, was supposed to be for like everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let, let everybody That's kind what's of great about put the tarot. pieces. It's very like relatable to a lot of us. Um, I did this reading for my dad that was just insane because like it was so spot on um, as far as just like his health. Wait, your dad was insane or the reading was insane? Both. Okay. <laughs> he is actually insane. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I did this reading just for my dad my... that was insane. I'm like, oh, he yeah. was or he is? Or, you oh, know? he <laughs> is. Like, definitely he is. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did the chariot spread for him. And I was like, okay, hey, so you're not sleeping still. Uh, you are like, what else was there? There was like, um, oh, strength was, was his obstacle that he was trying to overcome. I was like, okay. Um, there was like a lot of really heavy stuff. And I was like, yeah, I mm. think this is you. So, um, but well, obviously with like friends and family, sometimes, I mean, you know them. So it's definitely easier to relate the cards. Um, to just what you know about their lives yeah uh because yeah i did want to touch on that real quick because um you know reading any sort of divination Mm -hmm. um i think i've done runic divination you know that that's where that's where i found my comfort zone um and it hasn't been comfortable getting there i mean it's it was it was a sacrifice there was a lot of uh trials and, and whatnot to get where i am and i'm not even the greatest i mm-hmm. mean it's it's always learning right never always mm-hmm. the student never the master but uh the bias you know that can sometimes creep in because of the person that you know you know you maybe don't want to mm-hmm. say the wrong thing or 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 show them something that may be upsetting or whatever it's like sorry mm-hmm. but this isn't i'm not i'm not trying to make your day here um yeah this is what it says you know like right it is what it is yeah and, and how challenging that can be with people that we know that are close to us and yeah it was um I have kind of a mixed relationship with him but like um it was a father's day gift and I recorded like the audio notes I like you know um did like really detailed notes for him and it was hard like telling him Mm -hmm. you know like hey we don't talk often but like you should just be aware that I'm aware (laughs) that like this Mm -hmm. is going on and um he it ended really hopefully he got like the two of wands or the three of wands I think it was the two of wands suggesting a lot of opportunity Mm. but um I mean the thing about tarot and like the future cards it's really you like they'll never a hundred percent promise anything it's really up to you to do the work so yeah um yeah like divination is interesting it's something in 2017 when I started uh, I bought my first deck uh I didn't realize that's what I was doing (laughs) Mm. I I didn't because I didn't really think of it as that but like now um in the last year or two having studied it a lot more intensely it's like wow yeah we really are channeling like yeah man we're energy weaving is is a way I like to put it it's 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 not so much just trying to see well what does somebody else have to say it's like what can I put into these threads how can Mm -hmm. I weave things in my own way you know and it's 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 really powerful stuff when when, like when you get people who are good at it it does things I know I've seen it you know it's 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 nothing and people can be you know 
they can believe it or not. And that's their prerogative. I'm just saying from my experience, it's when, <laughs> when you, uh, when you enter into those, those threads uh, and put yourself in it like that, it's, you're part of it now. Right. And we have that ability. Right. Um, and that's why I'm always cautious with people who uh, get into heathenry. I was to say heathenry specific, because I know that's my wheelhouse. And that like one of the first things they want to get into is let's learn the runes, you know, I'm like, Oh yeah, maybe not. Like, <laughs> maybe you not. May, <laughs> may hold off a bit, you know, like right, get into right, understanding right. like hearth cult and your relationships with the the spirits in and around you, you know, the Vatir or, yeah. or whatever you want to call them. And then mm -hmm. how your relationship blooms within or from that to dealing with the divine and then, you know, at some point along the way, it'll probably re be made manifest to you that the runes should be something you delve into. And that's how it was for me. You know, I didn't think at first that that was something I should do. It was it was quite literally just like a crack in the middle of the night, you know, a, a, like a lightning crack that said mm -hmm. time to do it, time to hang from the tree. Right. You know, as it were. And uh, it, that's where it started. It was it wasn't me deciding to do it. It was getting this message, as it were, from like the from the divine yeah. from the universe from the gods however you want to label it mm -hmm. um that's how it was for me and i caution people that feel like they just have to do it because well that's just part of heathenry it's a part of it but it's a well, yeah. separate part of it like it's right back in the old days you know people that were designated to do it did it not it wasn't like every tom dick and harry in the village right. you know had our own set of runes and, and like we we have some sources that say well you know the man of the house would do it and then you have uh other sources that um mention volvas you know specific uh -huh. cirruses and 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 the 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 safe kona you know those women mm -hmm. those those people of the village of the of the area that were kind of traveling and, and did it from village to village you know they didn't mm -hmm. stay in one place they they took that stuff with them and why do you think that was because the people didn't want to keep that powerful energy like yeah hibernating with them. right like, okay you did your thing now right go, go away <laughs> right um <laughs> you know? yeah it's kind of funny my husband because I've been educating him as I've gotten more into this especially this year it's I'm like so today all you know I'm I'm a part of a community for tarot I'm like today I learned it is crucial you do not touch someone's deck unless you have their permission absolutely not like if it's an accident okay yeah. but Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. So he uh, always asks, which is like so sweet because I'm like, it's OK. Yes, you can like move them or whatever. And um, yeah, it's always one of those things because they do just have a lot of potent energy in them. Mm -hmm. So I don't uh, when I do readings, you know, I, I I pretty much make it known like the readings that I do with the runes that I use. Mm -hmm. uh, these are mine, you know. Yeah. Um, if I give you permission to touch one or, or move one or pick one up, that's fine. Other than that, it's hands off. Let me let me maneuver them, you know? Absolutely. So I, I get it now. Uh, you know, we could almost make a whole podcast about oh, divination. Yeah. Maybe in the future. <laughs> it, it, definitely. Um, I think it's a fun topic. And I think yeah, a lot of people great. are really into it. So it would be, um, a, it would be a fun thing. But I, I do want to. I sent you the, oh, because I'm trying to get Ogum runes, which are, yes, yeah, the, they're the, the Celtic. Celtic runes, because I'm like, okay, like, I'm doing pretty good with tarot, um, but I'm a druid, like, I should be reading Ogum, <laughs> so, which I have studied and charted, like, I know some of the basic meanings of those, um, my handbook's pretty comprehensive about it, so there is a GoFundMe, if you guys wanted to donate, it just covers a, a set of runes, a book, and a notebook and uh I was willing to do because like I you know I'm not going to charge for something I don't know how to do yet so if you guys want to practice like we can do it over zoom or whatever once I've studied yeah awesome so we'll be definitely you know we'll, we'll definitely be linking that because I'm all about you know tapping into the the resources in the community and and crowdfunding is a great way for people to support you know, small businesses and, and mm -hmm. support their creators and, 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 and be interactive in that way. So yes, it'll be linked in the show notes and description. So check it all out for sure. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, burnout, burnout, uh, um, you know, 
this this topic this word can can cover a slew of things you can be physically burnt out because you just again don't feel like getting up mm -hmm. and doing anything because it's so repetitive right I, i'm bored right. but uh so we can talk about that too but also i think it it definitely hits home for a lot of us when it comes to feeling burnt out in spiritually oh yeah um, have you experienced stuff like that yourself yeah and um uh, I would say like most recently it would have been, um, like end of last year and I was kind of just doing my thing normally. I was still working in pharmacy at the time though, as a technician, um, really hard job, especially during the holidays. Uh, and I just kind of stopped, like I stopped even acknowledging, um, the deities I was working with each day. I wasn't really like I, I was barely reading tarot. I try to do that for myself every day, if not, mm. you know, doing readings for other people. But um, yeah, I was definitely burned out physically, mentally, spiritually. Uh, didn't want to do it anymore. Like, definitely. Did you, um, and I, I know I've, I've done this too, where you find something of inspiration, right? And it, it gets you fired up. You know, you want to, you want to be immersed in it all the time as much as possible and that's where yep. you find your your happiness you know your fulfillment mm -hmm. and then something happens um that takes that away and i think a lot of us wonder well was it ever really that strong enough to begin with if something in my life could take that fire away you know and mm -hmm. and, and and lose mm -hmm. lose that interest uh we almost feel ashamed. I think some of us yeah. do that, 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 you know, life in general can, can be so manipulative, you mm -hmm. know, towards us and, and take away things that we at one time felt so passionate about. Right. Right. What um, are some things that you felt that maybe you felt, you know, beneficial to healing that um, kind of feeling? I recommitted to sobriety that seriously helped me a lot. Uh, I know for me, it just runs in my family. So for me, it's just not a good idea. Um, you know, like just that's it. It's just not a good idea for me. So no um, simulation, no substances at all to any, any sort of stimulants. Just it's, it's a hard no, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, sobriety, it's just, it really rocks. Like I'm five or six months sober now and I'm like, I have Congrats. my life. Yeah, thank you. Like, it's just well like- done. Uh, I have those relationships with, um, those guides, like again, and, um, hmm. that doesn't, I'm not thinking about, oh, I have to, you know, budget around my alcohol this week, or I have to, uh, you know, like plan my drinking or whatever. Like yeah. I know, um, for people who struggle with that, it's just kind of like, okay, can I get away with it here? Can I not like when I mm -hmm. get home, like alcohol is really just, it's your brain. Um, <laughs> yep. so recommitting to sobriety was like huge for me. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, I, I stopped working in pharmacy. I took some time off because I wanted to study for my um, federal certification. So I had like a state provisional license in my state. But if you're uh, federally licensed by the board, I could work in like any state or territory. Uh, so I took some time off to do that. Um, and you know what kind of happened is I just ended up leaning more towards my spirituality. Like... Mm. I was trying to study pharmacy every day, but, uh, I was like, I love pharmaceuticals. I love how helpful they are sometimes, but they can do a lot of damage too. Um, I've seen it. Synthetic drugs. You mean like, like yeah. The, yeah. And I saw that in the pharmacy. It's totally a huge reason I relapsed. It's totally a huge reason I burned out was just seeing these people, uh, struggle over chemicals. It's just what it is. Um, yeah, I never really realized just hearing you say like what kind of, you know, the type of people that you're exposed to um, every day working in that industry, you know, mm -hmm. it's not just people coming in because they need their asthma inhaler refilled. Like there's people that 
make the regular pharmacy visits because of some pretty heavy duty stuff. Right. I mean, I'm sure you, you got know. some crazy horror stories, which we don't have to go I, into, but I mean, I'm sure no. you've seen some things. Like, I'm man, like, I've, and some I've, stuff. Counted, <laughs> I've counted some prescriptions where I'm like, holy crap. Like, Why? wow. Yeah. But you know, like that's, that's just like what, uh, hurt ultimately and like made me so just not want to do it anymore uh it hurt your I, spirituality you mean yeah like yeah the, like my soul connected? I was like it's really? like soul crushing like mm. you know um so sounds very uh it's like the path of an like an empath like it sounds very yeah, empathetic yeah. to to the point of other people's pain is your pain yeah uh, yeah yeah. Um, and I definitely think that comes with like my, uh, mood disorder too, but cause I'm bipolar, but like, um, no, yeah. Like, I mean, as a technician, as a pharmacist, you do have that bedside manner. You do care about your patients. Everybody gets burned out. I mean, like physically we're not eating, we're not drinking enough water. Mm. Um, I, there would even be times where it's like, do I have time to go to the bathroom? Dude, it's the bathroom. Like oh, go man. to the bathroom. You know, right. that's how bad it would get though. Like, um, so yeah. I just I, I studied for it for a while and I was like, I can't be a part of that. Like something where your basic needs aren't even really like you just care so much or the company cares so much that like you're not even taking care of yourself physically. So life to work balance is off. Yes. Yeah. Which I know a lot of folks, and you know, uh, at least here in in this country, in the United States, can can relate to. We have a terrible life work balance ethic. You know what I mean? Like ethically, morally, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, especially when you get into corporate, like corporate type jobs, or at at the corporate level. I mean, any any efforts to you know advance, almost it goes hand in hand with well, you're going to have less time. With mm -hmm. your family, you know, you got to put more time into the business, more time into the company. I'm like, oh, I'm right. sorry, but I don't, I, don't. there is nothing, there's no monetary job on this planet that is worth that to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I take my time off mm -hmm. now and I didn't used to, you know what I mean? Like there were, there was times over my life where I'd be like, well, I didn't use it, you know, meaning like my vacation time or mm -hmm. pay time off. And I know not everybody has a career or, or, or a job that offers that, but when it does, and when you can, don't, don't let it burn up. Don't, don't literally, don't literally, literally, I'll get it out. Don't literally, uh, let your, like your health burn up on you. Oh, you yeah. need that time mm -hmm. away from your job from, cause look, how many, how many hours of the day do we spend away from our loved ones because of these things called jobs? Right. And we're losing that connection, uh, th that meaningful connection uh, with the people that matter the most. We're not, we're not sitting down at dinners together hardly anymore. We're yeah. not taking time, even when we do go out to eat, to enjoy one another's company because yeah. it's such a busy, hectic, you know, get in this seat, feed them, get them out of this seat so the next people can come in, repeat, re you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's such a, it's such a disconnected lifestyle that the world has kind of just leaned into gone, you know, gravitated towards it's no mm -hmm. wonder people are just like, I'm sick of this. I'm burnt out. I don't oh, yeah. know what to do anymore. Where can I feel rejuvenated? Right. Um, but I yeah, think that, a lot of it starts just with your basic self-care is yeah. Like take care you, of ourselves. Are yes. you eating? Are you eating at the same times? Like, is it good food? You know, are, are you just grabbing whatever's available? Um, yeah, Are I was you sleeping enough. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. I interrupted you. But yeah, like the eating the eating thing. I was talking with someone not all that long ago. It was about being full after we eat versus being fulfilled. And you look at like the portions of food that are served in like restaurants nowadays, uh -huh. and everybody's like, "Oh, they had such great portions." Well. Sure, but is it just empty calories? I mean, are yeah. you literally eating two thousand calories at lunch of uh -huh. junk? You know, when you look other places in the world and it's like they they give you, you know, a little, but it's like naturally grown, yes, organic. It's like it's clean. it's full, yeah, it's fulfilling. Like mm -hmm. it it makes you feel better when you eat food that you mm -hmm. know there's been love and and care put mm -hmm. into it. It's such a different 
experience and just eating for the sake of eating. It's like eating to be nourished on all levels. Definitely. Um, I had gastric bypass done two years ago. It really taught me how to eat again. Like, um, yeah, I was basically a baby. Like I went from liquid to semi-solid to solids again. Um, really? Oh yeah. So I'm like really picky about what I eat now. I mean, um, sometimes it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. I just think of this random story that like, um, a fitness trainer I follow, she was talking about how she was training for, um, a like body competition, some sort of swimsuit competition. Mm -hmm. And, um, it got crazy to the point she wouldn't eat an apple because she was afraid it would like show. I mean, that is like caring a little too much. So I'm not that crazy, but like, yeah, you know, it goes both ways. It absolutely goes both ways. Absolutely. I think um, you can get burnt out on the good stuff too. Mm -hmm. If I mean, going too hard or, or, or being any, any extreme to any level isn't, isn't healthy. You know, moderation is the key. Um. You know, you can be a gym rat and a, and a fitness buff or or a mm-hmm. nutrition guru and still be miserable and be like, I'm just done with, you know, counting the calories, the macros, the, you know, again, moderation, right? Yeah, you can, you can do it easily our, uh, enough. Our, our card we pulled for temperance, it goes back to that, the there balance. You there you go. Um, I've been meditating on that one a lot uh, this past week. I know we were like emailing back and forth and I was like, I'm going to start the nicotine lozenges, which I do and don't, I just try to like put it down occasionally, like give myself a timer or something, but, um, baby steps, you know, you got to start oh, yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, but that's great. Cause you know, the temperance thing really does fit. And again, like we had no idea, at least I didn't prior to this episode that that was going to be a card that is pulled on an episode built around balance or, mm-hmm. or, you know, burnout requires it to, to avoid the burnout. You got to have mm-hmm. balance, you know, cause again, if you're too much one way or the other, then of course you're going to get tired of it. You're going to be yeah. like, the hell with all this, man. Right. And, you know, why, why bother anymore? What's the point? Right. You're not feeling fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some of the things that have helped me find balance and nobody's perfect. And I'm one of those people who aren't, you know, but one of the things that have helped me find balance is knowing when I want something versus when I need something. And Mm -hmm. if I feel that it's a vice or if it's something that is, you know, potentially harmful to me or others around me, if I feel like I need it, then I don't. Yeah. You know, um, if I want something, how badly do I want it? Do I want it because I'm feeling stressed or do I want it because Mm -hmm. I'm feeling like burnt out? Oh man, having Mm -hmm. this would really, really calm me down. Mm -hmm. that 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 changes from a want to a need because now you're 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 feeling like in order to not feel a certain way this other thing has to be part of your repertoire to achieve that feeling Mm -hmm. you know versus just wow you know it's a nice cool night or it's a nice warm night i would really enjoy uh, this thing that or the other right and then just leave it at that and so you know burnout can happen when we overindulge when we yeah. push too hard, when we go too hard in the paint, right? When we're right, when we're just giving everything we've got and not nurturing ourselves to be able to mm-hmm. handle it, I think is is another key thing. Burnout happens when we've just we're, we're firing on all cylinders and we're not giving that engine enough time to cool down before mm-hmm. we fire it back up again. Um, I just thought of like I think too when we're burned out, um, maybe physically we get so tired, but it's like there's kind of something really cool about just being disciplined. I mean, I, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I don't really want to pull any cards, but I'm like, but I'll feel so much better if I do, if I do, you know, go shuffle my deck and get out my journal. Um, I always feel a lot better. And um, what I like about how it's evolved to nowadays is um, like, maybe I'm, Uh, running out the door and I check my app for a tarot and I just pull a random card. Okay. I mean, there's probably people who are like, you didn't create a sacred space and this and that. And I'm like, but I did, you know, I took a moment to sort of breathe and clear my head. I was 
you know, driving with my husband somewhere, I had a question, whatever, like I nurtured myself spiritually. So yeah. like, um, there are tools that, uh, you can utilize spiritually if you are feeling burned out. Uh, it doesn't have to be sit down at my altar, line up all my crystals, uh, light my candles, you know, I don't have, um, the opportunity to do that. Um, it doesn't have to be like a, a, a formal event, right? Right. Um, I do believe in clearing your headspace, um, before you access any energy like that. Uh, but yeah, like I, I think a lot of us, um, we feel like there's pressure to do that, to just be like, well, you know, I, (laughs) I've been out all day and I didn't have time to set up my altar. So like, forget it. I'm just gonna go to bed or I'm just gonna keep watching TV, whatever, not engage. Yeah. Um, like doing the complete opposite of the, the other extreme. Yes. You know, going too hard. And then that's, a, that's one opposite or that's, that's one extreme. And then you have the opposite of that is not doing anything at all. Not even exactly. trying, not even putting forth any effort. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got to thinking about too, I don't know if you've ever experienced this with, I'm sure there's people that have in, been in your life who admire you, right. That look up to you. Um, and when they see things that you do to whatever degree, right? Even if it's just a, a, a social media post or whatever, like they have this, they have this vision of you. They, they envision you as a certain thing, right? And mm-hmm. they, 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 they feel like they're, that they're falling short because they're not doing the things that you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Have mm-hmm. you ever experienced that? Mm-hmm. And, like comparing yourself or yeah. them, them comparing themselves to yeah, you. Like, like, yeah. They, they see this source of inspiration and they are like, I want to be that. Mm-hmm. I want to be just like that. Or they go, I want what you've got. Mm-hmm. I want what that person has. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been victim of that too. I've I've been like, I see, you know, over the years, the way, you know, someone's house is or, or their aesthetic or just the way mm-hmm. they are, you know, project themselves on, yeah. on online, on social media. And I learned very quickly, you know, not everything that you see is what's really happening. Exactly. You're only seeing a portion of it. You're seeing a side of this person's life. This isn't 100% always their reality. They're yeah. going to have bad days. She gets messy with them too, just right. like it does with us. So, so, uh, you know, I think some of the things that we talk about burnout is if you're always trying to achieve something that you think is the ideal lifestyle and you're basing that off of what you see online or what you see mm-hmm. someone just sharing about on their social media, that's an unrealistic goal to attain. Absolutely. You, you can't, you can't do that. And then, yeah. and, and feel and f- fulfilled or enriched. You're, of course you're going to feel burnt out because you're right. striving for something that doesn't exist. Um, I have been, I earlier this year listened to a great book about, um, it's called something like how to make house when you're drowning or something like that. Uh, I was in this support group for women on discord, but like, and everybody was listening to it anyways. So, but we're like, this is so great because the author is really like, you're not lazy. You know, you're just human. Like if you, if you have a laundry system, your laundry doesn't get perfectly folded and put away. You're just taking it from the dryer. Hey, you have a working laundry system. I'll tell you that like your clothes get clean. You wear them like that's just reality or um there was like something else I was reading where um I kind of lost my train of thought but like my point is just houses are meant to be lived in like Mm -hmm. they're meant to be lived in and honestly when you're seeing content creators like show you their space it probably only looks like that 15 or 20 percent of the time for the content yeah yeah (laughs) they gotta set the stage you know yeah um Um, because houses are just like you know, we eat and we sleep and go about our lives here. And, um, I'll tell you, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel very welcoming if I'm in someone's home. That's like spotless. I'm like paranoid. I'm like, Oh yeah. Do they do anything right. here? Or is this just like a rental space? Oh, yeah, you know, that totally. they, are they just showing this off or 
everybody yes, that thinks so, yeah. like where do you live like how do you mm -hmm. what do you do here like there, you know again moderation is key you know there's some yeah. people are are more fastidious than others um and and other people's standards of cleanliness are a bit different right uh, but as long as it's not like just you know a, a train wreck in your living room or it's you know right you know the roaches you are, be are sanitary, vying for space right? yeah 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 you can, like you want to make standards. sure that the litter box is getting done you want to make sure that you're you know sweeping and stuff and yeah yeah like but if i see some dust on a coffee table or on a shelf i'm yeah. not gonna be like Ugh. no right. i'm gonna be like well this is what life's about you know yeah. that's <laughs> it's, it's not perfect and that's right. okay don't stress it but or yeah especially, yeah especially if you have kids i mean and i don't oh, yeah. i don't have any kids myself but like you know my my niece and stuff like my sister-in-law be like I'm sorry or the pets you know the dog and stuff and yeah um I'm like hey she's like three it's okay <laughs> like our niece is gonna be two in September oh uh, and we've got three dogs uh-huh so there you go I mean when it comes to like our standard of cleanliness it's like well, at least there's not, you know, piles of fur in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Know? Like a little bit of dust here, some toys thrown around. Right. You know what I mean, you know, what's it's fine. Yeah. And so, but yeah, don't, don't, uh, you know, so, so like, I don't, when people talk about, you know, the, the, the burnout thing, it's, it's sometimes you're just putting too much into the things that almost don't matter. Like, exactly. Don't try to live like me. I mean, great. If I'm being inspiring and, and mm -hmm. there are things about what I'm saying or doing that inspire you to, find some sort of fulfillment in that way then then do it but i mean don't try to copy me right. don't don't don't, no. don't be me be you yourself are you. yes you are you and everybody is unique and um yeah like everybody has something to offer so yep um i think sure. it's part of that i think it's part of that study uh mm -hmm. you know I'm leaning, I'm, I'm reflecting a bit on the cards and I'm probably butchering some of the, the context, but I was oh, thinking yeah, about you're the fine. King, I took a, I took a photo car. before yeah. I put them away too. So <laughs> the King, <laughs> you know, that. reading his books and in, in that library, you know, where all this knowledge is, is accessible, you know, and it's, boy, you could, you could, you could drown yourself in those waters. You could become yeah. so engrossed with trying to find the answer that when it's smack dab in front of your face, you can't mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes that's all it takes. Sometimes it takes us sometimes it takes us the 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 time to pull back get out of that mess get out mm -hmm. of the muck and just evaluate things you know take that time away if you're so engrossed with something um not meaning you i'm just saying like to the you know us in general like if we're so engrossed right. in things that we are that are that are our lives with other people or or just our our quality of life mm -hmm. is suffering then i think it's time that we reevaluate yes Those, I talk, I call it course corrections you know a hundred percent I think that's what the nine of wands was talking about too it's like it, it's definitely time to just make a call um but like I I feel that with like the being engrossed and studying and everything um mm -hmm. where like I mean that's how pharmacy has been for me at certain points, uh, there's also ADHD in my family. We can definitely hyper focus on topics very intensely. Um, that's how like video games have been at a certain point for me. There was one point in my life where um, the uh, trading card game I talked about with you, that's all that would get me out of bed in the day. Like mm. I couldn't even get up, but I would to get my daily login and like to play. Like that was the only thing that kept me going. Uh, so while I think it can keep you pushing on and everything, it's like, um, there's that again, the balance. Of, yeah. How has it come to this? How has it come to the, I was like, how has it come to, I'm just playing this card game. Uh, a lot of it had to do with my living situation. I think we could talk about like environment too. Um, there sure. were a lot of issues going on out of my control, like with my family. Uh, but like, I also think it's really important when you're in too deep, you definitely just have to remember uh, stereotypical, if it's not okay, it's not the end. I like yeah. to think that, yeah, if it really isn't the end, if, if everything isn't okay, then it probably isn't the end. You yeah. have a lot of different options, like- You're gonna get through it resources whatever to help you're gonna you. make it 
Yeah, mm-hmm. you're gonna make it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had a lot of things, you know, uh, because I do this stuff here on the podcast, you know, and I have a cadence that I do it in. Um, I've fallen victim of feeling the obligation to do something just because I've set that expectation. Mm-hmm. And again, moderation, right? There's a fine line. Um, yes, I do have an obligation. I do have a responsibility uh, to fulfill things because that's the expectation I've set. But that that responsibility and that obligation doesn't measure up nearly as much as, say, my obligation to my my wife or my family or my tribe. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's mm-hmm. a different bar- there's, there's a different measure that we're that we're stacking mm-hmm. things up against. And so, if I get busy one week. Or if I'm just not feeling it or mm-hmm. really anything, it's kind of like, <laughs> hey, God, I, I, I used to be at a place where I would be, I would feel really, really bad mm-hmm. about not doing a podcast for a week or two yeah. weeks or whatever. And I would feel like, oh, I'm letting these people down. And then I realized, well, no, I'm doing this for myself because yeah. I can't, I can't do, you know, anything of quality if I'm yeah. just over here, like forcing it. And that's that's a, I think that's a part of, of of burnout too is you know you feel like I just have to do this for whatever reason like again right. you have the sense of obligation or the sense of responsibility and then soon that 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 takes over and you're like no fuck it I'm not doing it anymore <laughs> and you lose the the fire and and you go just I'm, yeah. I'm done oh yeah be careful like, with that you know you like, recently took that week off to go to the beach or whatever I was happy mm-hmm. for you I was like that's awesome like it's probably going to be so fun and so relaxing. And I just listened to my other podcasts, like no big deal. I was like, he's taking much needed time off. I think you just hit like some milestone or something. And I was like, yeah, like, well, that was a, that was a a much needed time because I, um, you know, back in April when I lost my dad, my time away from the podcast was spent going to back to New York and and spend Uh time up there. And then I came right back after that and went back to work. And so, yeah, sure. It was two weeks off of work, you know, but considering what the purpose and Mm -hmm. the reason of why I was there, I didn't get a break. I, 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 if anything, I had more, you know, things weighing on my mind and on my heart than Mm -hmm. if I hadn't taken off. So it it did, it reached the point where I'm like, I just need to not do anything. I need to forget that there's a page, a a channel, a podcast, and I just need to look Mm -hmm. at the water for a week or, or have my, you know, anything. And if that's what it takes, you know, then do it. Like we said before, you know, don't be afraid to take that break, that, that mental vacation, just disconnect for a while. Right. You know, Um, and if it, if it requires you to make that big thing, you know, just do a hard reset and unplug everything. Yeah then hey man that's what it takes yeah um and I mean you know like I was supposed to be on this show a little earlier even but then my grandfather passed on the ninth and uh like we had a lot of time to prepare for it he did have a lot of chronic health issues okay still that's a patriarchal figure who's passing and um like I had all of these readings lined up for like my friends and my family and I was working through them so slowly and it usually would happen in the afternoons. I would do so good during the mornings. It would get to be about like two or three. And I was like, I just can't anymore. And I would just like take my comfort food to bed and like, you know, put something on TV, go on a walk, whatever. Um, And like, I I'd even like put my phone on silent mode. Like, you know, no, I don't want to talk to anybody right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was, I mean, his funeral this uh, past week, it was definitely very, it was just peaceful, like finally laying him to rest. And I really have felt like going back into uh, my line of work with the cards and everything. It's like, okay, I'm ready now. Um, And yeah, like it was very hard, but like, uh, I talked to my grandma this morning. She's doing okay. Um, That's good. Yeah. Like family becomes really important around those times. Perspective Um, changes, you know, mm -hmm. things get, things get brought back into focus. I think, Mm -hmm. I think anybody who's, anyone who's experienced a close loss can definitely um, relate to that. Mm -hmm. The, the perspective of life in general, just where the importance of things land for us. Mm -hmm. 
it shifts, it changes uh, yeah. after the loss of someone so close like that. Right. You know? And I think that's part of the lesson, you know, um, dealing with burnout. It's it happens to all of us. Yeah. We're not exempt from it. No one's exempt no. from it. And we're not saying that here are your top 10, you know, druidic and heathen tips to avoid burnout. <laughs> Look, guys, it's gonna happen. No, you're gonna, just, you're gonna bit, you're gonna get fed up. Yeah, with a lot. <laughs> I, I really think you just need to do what you need to do. If that's like my way of coping with my grandfather, seriously, was just YouTube, French bread, and like butter. That's what I did. <laughs> like that's Sounds how great. I coped. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I just need this right now, and I allowed myself, and I feel better, and I'm back to my like regular eating habits now because I gave myself that time. So. Mm-hmm. See, that's a good point too. I mean, uh, catharsis, the way it happens can, can it be some of the most random and odd, seemingly odd ways, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, when I walk barefoot on the ground, you know, that's cathartic. It, oh yeah. It's, it's, grounding it's, it's, everything. it's, you know, but, and other people be like, Oh, weirdo. But yeah. You know? Maybe but that doesn't I mean, work for some people. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not, but, or maybe they just haven't, maybe they just haven't reached the point in their lives that they realize how it mm -hmm. works and believing mm -hmm. that it works and actually putting forth the effort to want it to work. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. I can, I can sit here and tell uh, somebody who doesn't believe in, in runic magic all day long about how my, my castings have impacted people's lives. Uh -huh. And they'd be like, uh-huh. Yeah. Cool story, bro. Whatever. Yeah. But if, so if they don't believe it, is it real to them? No, it's not real to them because they don't mm -hmm. believe it. And it, you got to have a sense of belief. There, mm -hmm. ha there, there has to be that that spark I think in us that says it is true. Yeah. Or believes it is true. Yeah. Um, so when we do those things, we're, we're weaving that magic once again to make it manifest and manifest it, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, well, I'm not just reading it from a book because some cool guy, whatever years ago said that this is a good idea. I'm applying it because no. it speaks to me and, it, and it's something right. that within myself is in my soul is, is a, right. it's, it resonates. When I look at my tarot, I'm thinking back to, wow, you know, this is something that's like almost 700 years old. I mean, think of the different figures that have held these cards, mm. like uh, how it's developed. I mean, people were hanged for it. They were burned for it. Like, yeah, good um, point. yeah like it's really powerful shit. So, yeah. Um, and the cool thing about tarot too, at least from a lot of the materials I've been studying and reading um, and following is just uh, like, you don't necessarily have to be psychic. A lot of it really is just intuition. Like you look at your rune, you look at your card, what does that invoke in you? What kinds of feelings, what kind of words and imagery come to mind? And like the rest just kind of takes care of itself. It's really crazy how it happens every time, but um yeah i think if um if i you know and that's one of the things too like I, I don't know if you've seen this uh in some of your like online boards and and whatnot but do, do people share like their own uh tarot spreads and in like some of the stuff that you're involved in like do you see people online like sharing their tarot spreads and asking for interpretations or hey this oh. is what i see what do you see or is it is it like, because I've seen that with yeah. the runes, like people be like, guys, yeah. I, I drew, you know, Thurisas, Ansus, and Wunyo. Uh -huh. um, what does this mean? And I'm yeah. like, well, you're going to get however many people are in this group. Like if every single one of them answers, you're probably going to get like that many different di answers. Yeah, because uh, it means <laughs> what does it a, say to you? <laughs> a little bit different to everybody. Right. How I interpreted the tower, somebody could probably interpret that a lot more negatively, just depending on like what kind of reader they are. Um, or the context like, of the, the or draw, the context right? Context of the draw. Yeah. Like, what question are we answering? If it was a question about a relationship, like, oof, yeah, probably. Uh, prob's not good, but yeah. like, hopeful in the sense that like you got some experiences out of it and maybe it could be rebuilt is like how I would interpret that in a relationship. Um, mm. So, like, yeah, I don't know. Um, but I do see people sharing like one woman on our community. She shared help. I drew like seven or eight cards. They're all reversed. This has never happened before. That would probably freak me out. Mm. I don't really I rarely work with reversed cards. It's just kind of a preference right now. Um, gotcha. But I, I would probably freak out because a lot of people when they see reversed, they're like, it's negative. It's this and that. Um, 
but like mm-hmm. reversals don't always have to be negative either. Sometimes they're actually more positive. Um, so everybody was just kind of commenting, like, it's okay. That's happened to me too. Or like, you know, this and that and the other thing. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. I've seen, you know, uh, runes get pulled or, or castings done and those who have done runic divination for years um will comment on on something and and there are nuances that are shared you know and and similarities that other people Mm -hmm. that get brought into it that will maybe look at it and give their put their two cents in uh you know find find common ground with but in in many cases the the one person's read on the runes is different than the other person's and they're all the same runes you Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. it's like well you know if you get somebody who reads them left to right let's say you know it's going to be totally a a totally different story than from someone who reads them right to left right or who doesn't have any format of reading them they maybe look at them in the sense of well which one came closest to the person who you were casting for Mm -hmm. or you know what time of day was it i don't know i'm just you know yeah no stuff like that factor though and then like with tarot you can even get into well what uh star sign or whatever is this Mm -hmm. is this like an aries or a taurus or i mean it it just gets crazy um you can yeah you can you can like we all agree there's like keywords there's like key meanings yep to uh these cards but uh yeah like it's really cool because you just can kind of put your personality into it um i've heard that too yeah you know, uh, somebody reading the, your the, your cards, you read them versus the next person who has their cards, how they read them. Uh, you get that, their element, you know, mm-hmm. their personality, their their mm-hmm. style. And for the runes, especially, you know, again, they have, they all have their inherent meaning, like, you know, feyu, uh, cattle, wealth, you know. Right. Blue, okay. <laughs> that doesn't mean but, much, right? <laughs> but, but really, like, what are we talking about here when we're mm-hmm. looking at a spread or at a at a casting or a draw or something, you know? And uh, it it may not literally mean cattle in the literal sense. It it has esoteric or metaphysical meanings that we like to associate them with. Mm-hmm. And and whether that's you know rooted in anything super ancient or not, it 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 has definitely that method has proven to work for not just me, but others too. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? You know, what's right. wrong with, with kind of coming up? I, I, I mentioned one time, like, oh, wow, we got all these rune poems. You know, we got a Norwegian rune poem, an Anglo-Saxon rune poem. We got a an Icelandic rune poem. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned, I said with somebody one time, like, well, what about, what about our rune poems? What kind of rune poems are, are we writing? And it's not to yeah. try to take away from what those those characters represent but i guess my my point being was are we breathing new life into this seemingly older or or semi-ancient way of Mm -hmm. of trying to get a sense of things you know Mm -hmm. i mean at one point in time whether it was runes or whether it was just sticks with symbols carved on them Mm -hmm. or cards or 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 tea leaves or fire or anything i mean Mm -hmm. divination has been a a a very present component in in human existence for a very long time right right Um, so i would love to learn how to read tea leaves i think that is so cool i don't know much about that at all though i know nothing about it i just know that it's a thing and i'm like (laughs) that's crazy you know like fire scrying i think is another one or 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 isn't there one with like Um, mirrors too like like, actually what i do too during my readings i do like some smoke scrying so mm. because i'm vaping so Oh, cool. Yeah. I was just like, well, never why heard the hell not? Before. Yeah. I'm like, why the hell not? I'm like breathing life over these cards. Like, you know, I might as well try to discern huh. or scry. So how's that work for you? Uh... Have you... <laughs> you keep going back to doing it or is it like, well, that was weird. I won't do that again. Or has it given you like a, a perspective to pursue that element in your, in your yeah, readings? Definitely. Because, um, I mean, as an earth element, as a Taurus, I'm very, Like, I love the earth. I love the ground. Um, I hate the wind. When it gets windy, I hate it. (laughs) Gets my hair all tangled. You know, it rocks the house. Uh, So I was like, okay, well, like, I can't, because where I live, I can't burn incense inside, um, which sucks, but uh, I can vape. um, And I'm like, okay. And I just got the idea from like my grimoire one day. 
because they have like guided um like journal prompts whatever and it was like try smoke scrying and uh, Mm. she had the example of like a candle and I was like well I can't do that but I'm vaping so I might as well yeah you just you just try to see like the images and stuff yeah make it work you know in your own way Mm -hmm. yeah our our uh friend of mine he's our brother in our tribe he's a thule and he's also a taurus and um and then i'm a scorpio our our gothi is a libra and my wife's a leo nice so yeah our charts are all over the place <laughs> you look yeah. at like how how uh some of our charts like um I don't know if you're into like astrology at all, but like how the charts can sometimes create uh, yeah, images I am. themselves. I'm just not very good at it yet. <laughs> like there was one, uh, one time who, uh, uh, he's still a dear friend of mine and he used to be our but he's a, he's a Scorpio as well. And both of our charts, when you combine them, mm-hmm. literally look like a hammer, like a Mjolnir. It was Whoa. like very, That's very definitive. No. And then, yeah. And like the one between me and uh, our current Gothi right now, it's, it's, it's very angular, very rocky. And I'm like, this is interesting, you know? Yeah. He's, he's, he's the, the Libra and, and I'm the, the Scorpio, but with yeah. his chart, him, and I forget who else, but um, his, his chart looks like a bow and arrow, like, like a, like a drawn bow and arrow. Uh huh. It's really interesting. That's cool. So, yeah. I would have thought he was like a Sagittarius or something, but Maybe his moon is in Sagittarius. I don't remember. Right. I, but, I, you know. Cause I know I'm like a Taurus Virgo Virgo, but I don't know much about like my rising and stuff like that. How that See, affects I'm a, me. I'm a Scorpio rising. My sun's in Scorpio, but my moon's in Gemini. Uh huh. So I got that double Scorpio thing going on, mm-hmm. which makes it difficult for people sometimes. But uh, yeah, it's always fun, you know? Um, yeah. Astrology is really fun. Sometimes like I read things and I'm like, okay, no, but um. <laughs> for the most part uh that's like such a Taurus no yeah and I'm like no like the thing about Taurus liking food that's definitely true like that's a comfort thing for us like when in doubt maybe some good food will like help a little bit right but like um I think no, that's just like, certain people man like I, yeah. I that's a comfort for me like if I can get a, a good meal in me then it's like those old Snickers commercials you know <laughs> you're not yourself when you're you're not yourself when you're, when you're angry. hungry, when you're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and that goes back to just being mortal. You know, you have your yeah. low blood sugar and you got to take care of yourself and stuff. And yeah, um, yeah, like uh, astrology is really cool, though. I just checked my phone and the moon is um, a little over half waxed. It's under Libra right now. Um, Interesting. So that's cool. My sister-in-law is a Libra uh, and she's <laughs> like a therapist. So she does really good at like balancing your your you know your strengths and your weaknesses so right yeah um that's an important my... thing to therapy you know being yeah uh, maybe not going necessarily going to a therapist i was just thinking like burnout and right how sometimes we can't take care of ourselves sometimes we yeah. need that that extra component that third party that mm-hmm. unbiased person to mm-hmm. help us out and that's okay Definitely. Um, therapy can definitely really help. I've done group or individual and they're both pretty good. And then you like get to a point sometimes where it's like, all right, like I have done a lot of work here. I think I'm okay now. Or, Mm. I mean, if you can't afford therapy and, um, I mean, there's self-help books, there's a lot of support groups that are free. Like I don't go to AA meetings, but those are free. Yeah. Uh, you know, like there are definitely a lot of resources. Um, Oh, it's so, so, it's so accessible too, you know, for, for any and every type. Like go to the library, like the library's free. (laughs) I love the library. I, I, I've heard both sides of, of, you know, that argument, people who I know that will find every reason and excuse why they can't Mm -hmm. get the help that they need, Mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, is it that you can't or that you won't? It's that they won't trust you know, me. And, but yeah. You know, because if you got to, and I, you know, that's the ugly part of ourselves that is hard to yep. face when mm-hmm. you're being confronted with the ugly truth. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just, uh, it's I think that's human nature. Swallow. Yeah. 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 It's um, human nature it's to defend ourselves. Like my dad is, that's him. I mean, and, that sucks. It's just like, well, I can't do the work for you though. So exactly. 
You know, um, I wonder half the time some, you know, with, with some of the experiences I've had, uh, maybe not half the time, but in, in some of the experiences that I've had, uh, I'm walking away from the encounter going, were you expecting me to like, like do this for carry you? this for <laughs> yeah, you? Or like... <laughs> were you just, I mean, you know, you're left there wondering like, what the heck just happened here? Like, okay, uh, you're venting, like you're, you're clearly venting. Like I get yeah. that. And so I'm not going to say a whole lot, but then you're almost like it, feeling like they're expecting a response and in such a way that they feel like oh yeah could you take this for me or could you do this for me and i'm just right. over here going no right this is, this is your ship you got to sail it man right like, i'll um, help when i can but i'm not gonna do, I, I can't do this for no. you um i think for his reading because like sometimes i'll be like here's a little homework no it's just if you want to like meditate on mm. something for a few minutes or maybe there's like a little journaling prompt I'll be like he hey like journal on this uh I think I just told him to like reflect on whatever he was afraid of doing like I know he's not gonna do it and it's like do I still sleep at night of course I do like because yeah. you know like I can't control that um and you love that person they mean so much to you but uh like they gotta they, do it they clearly they gotta don't put the love work themselves in. yeah like there's something about them that really blocks uh their ability to like love themselves so yeah we all get into those times i think you know just some people worse than others or, or more intense than others you know mm -hmm. taking care of ourselves loving ourselves some people mm -hmm. just really when they don't love themselves they hate themselves yeah and they hate themselves hard to the point that they 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 withdraw they they pull away mm -hmm. and it's like man that ain't the way dude like that ain't that ain't it if yeah. I, I i understand like how solitude can be healing it's like mm -hmm. when i do the like runic stuff whenever i see isa you know ice uh, i look at that as it's 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 stillness it's reflection you know because the water now is like the mirror and and it's 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 introspection you know you got to go inward um, but you also can't stay there too long because it can stagnate and it can become yes. vile and you can yes. become so lost in your own self that you've you've lost sight of the next cycle, the era, the the mm -hmm. the, the the harvest, the time to move, mm -hmm. right? To allow that movement and that change to happen. And uh some people really I've come to learn have have a real tough time breaking through that ice. Yeah. You know, they become frozen in time, yeah. as it were, and they they can't get past it and it's yeah. it takes a lot of chipping away and it's so the hard layers. to see them like you know because you just want to do what you can but honestly um the best thing to do is just to be there to just be there like to mm -hmm. be present for them mm -hmm. um yeah Accessible. that's hard yeah definitely well this has been a great show um Morgan. I agree. i've been having a lot of fun you know i think i think the people listening and watching will hopefully take some of what we said i know we went off in a lot of different directions but a little it's, bit. It's, it's coming back to the same you know the burnout right and i think yeah. we, we are sharing some some similar thoughts and we've shared our own life experiences with people yeah. to you know give them insight of well here's some ways maybe to um deal with it i'm not saying that you're going to avoid it i don't think that's what we're trying to say right. you're not going to avoid it but here's how to deal with it when you encounter yeah. these moments in your life you know step back um take care of yourself take first care and of yourself is what i was gonna say because yeah. like somebody taught me that a long time ago and like i've never forgotten it like yeah if you if you don't you can't pour from an empty cup like there it is yeah, yeah. if People, you don't take care of yourself you can't take care of your family or anyone so yeah anyone that you uh that that, that may look up to you or that may have you know you in admiration or that you just want to be there for like you can't be that person for them if if you're mm -hmm. like you say you know running on empty so right. definitely you know take care of yourself and i um i didn't know did was there was there a part two of the yes there's the card an oracle reading? card yeah. yeah so we had our five card tarot poll so i'll just give a brief explanation of what oracle decks are oracle decks are much more casual than tarot i mean you could have angel moon we're doing a moon oracle deck today uh yeah, like the ancient gods, you could do like Egyptian or Norse or whatever, Native mm -hmm. American. Um, and they're much more casual in the sense that they usually just give like advice, but they're still pretty crazy accurate at like reading situations I've found. Um, so we had the five card spread. We're going to conclude with like 
what should we do with uh, the insights that we've gotten from the tarot deck? Right. We got, ooh, uh, full moon in Leo. Don't let pride get in your way. Uh, yeah, okay. that's good. I think that's good. Uh, that can definitely and... be the thing that stops us from advancing uh, yeah. is our own pride. Yeah. Um, we mentioned that just a little while ago, right? Like those unsavory parts, the things that we don't like to hear about ourselves. It's it's inherent in us to be super defensive or to be like, whoa, absolutely you know, justify it, you know? Um, there's, yeah, selling yourself short and then kind of um, being too confident. I'm trying to find this place in the guidebook, but, uh, and then I'll take a photo so that we can show. Yeah um where is it what the heck well this is a great moment of the podcast right yeah it's it's real life guys like we're this is this we're is really a, i'm we're not really editing doing any of this, this right now normally no. and normally when you see people do collective readings on youtube they have the time to like edit and cut and everything and like write notes down yeah uh no, and this I'll is probably, happening in yeah, real life this know? is real time uh i'll probably write down notes um for our reading too uh so that I'll, I'll post them in the comments or something like that yeah. for you guys um so have you been letting your pride become an obstacle uh leo energy is all about the heart because it's the king of the jungle um hmm. So when, when Leo's energy is combined with the full moon, though, it kind of goes over the top. Uh, let's see. It's a time to find a balance between your own needs and the needs of the people around you. Hey, that's like the theme of the podcast, kind of. Yes, yes. Uh, this will help all of your relationships. Um, additional meanings here. Self-esteem is good. Vanity is not. Everyone is equally important. Uh, definitely if you were feeling like doing something creative this weekend, this card says go for it. Um, oh, and maybe for someone, a friendship might be ending. Yeah, there's multiple meanings for this card. So maybe, um, with that spirit card, uh, making a decision or something, mm. I don't know. Yeah. Like the it, tower it there be, is, is there again? Yeah. The you tower's know, there. yeah like yeah. there's a lot of that's true like relationships are constantly changing and people are coming and going so someone could be going through that at the end of this wow. week wow I a love lot this deck. yeah this oracle a, deck is awesome a lot to uh a lot to meditate on a lot to chew on mm -hmm. you know for everyone listening well, i mean for me for sure so appreciate you uh being Absolutely. first of all you know thinking of it and, and coming up with the idea and then more than happy to do it living it out yeah it's great um, so this is, you know, this is a great sort of testimony to a Druid's luck, right? Because this is what part of at least what you do yep. from, and what you're offering, you know? So you guys saw it here, um, saw it, listened to it, experienced it here on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast first. Um, for anybody, maybe that's that's done it with you before they already knew it. But for those that are new to this experience, now you know kind of what you're getting into. And you know, um, you're going to find all of the links for a Druid's Luck and, and everything Oregon's affiliated with in the comments, or sorry, in the description, in the show notes of the podcast. Yes, so do be sure to me. check it out. Um, and with the readings too, when you guys contact me, I am totally open to ideas. We can definitely customize something to work with. Like seriously, every reading is customizable. So that's great. I feel like um, having that, you know, kind of a not out of the box experience you know what i mean because i think right. sometimes people are just so rigid um, about it yeah you know like well it's uh you know 20 minutes and then this yeah, is what you're gonna like get or one whatever card, three card whatever like celtic cross i mean no mm -hmm. we can like go way beyond that so yeah so you're definitely getting a a heartfelt experience i feel you know yes. which means a lot to people and uh I think that the from what we were able to experience today amongst the conversation, a very genuine experience, you know, heartfelt and genuine Great dialogue. Yeah. yeah, very good. So, um, yeah, that about wraps it up for, you know, for today's episode. And um, don't forget, everyone that's you know listening, watching, please support the Druid's Luck in all the ways that you can by following the links that are in the description and show notes. And as always, check out 
the link tree link for Midgard Musings for all the ways that you can support this podcast and everything that I do here. There's all the socials down there. There's the uh, uh, Patreon page, um, just all of it down there. So be sure to check that out and do whatever you see fit in ways of support. Um, so yeah, anything else that you'd like to say to the people, Morgan, before we uh, wrap this up? Dreams do come true, guys. I wanted to be on this podcast. It happened. So follow your dreams. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, that's a great, that's a great sign off. And yeah. I always invite people to as well. You know, you yes. never know if, if you're thinking about writing in, if you're thinking about sharing your ideas, it, it'll and, it can. Yeah. There you go. It, yes. I'm, I'm, this is a classic example yep. of, you know, somebody I never knew really before who's been following this stuff for, for years. And now here they are on the podcast, you know, talking about everything that they do and hopefully sharing some really, you know, useful, important knowledge and, and mm -hmm. opinions for you. So it is absolutely doable and we encourage it. So write in, call in, share your thoughts, be interactive. It's what makes this so much fun for all of us. It so. was fun. Yeah. Well, it's been great having you on. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining me for being my guest today. And for all of the listeners and the watchers across Midgard and beyond, if there's anybody out there, <laughs> <laughs> may the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors smile upon you. See you in the next one. <laughs>